the Rebbe is taking a question. The question is, is if the light of Chasadim is associated with the created being, the light of Chokhmah being associated with the Creator. The Rebbe answers yes, that's correct. The Rebbe is taking another question. In all the aspects, does there shine 100% of the light? The Rebbe says this is a philosophical question. In Chokhmah, there shines 100% of the light of Chokhmah, and Bina 100% of the light of Chasadim. In Zeran Pin, it's already a small illumination. So only an illumination and not 100%. Another question, does every time that the arouses the desire to give, does it mean that we're in Bina? The Rebbe says, generally speaking, yes. Another question, does Bina want to give because it's more pleasure for her than receiving? The Rebbe says this is also a philosophical question. In a formal way, Bina is disgusted by desire to receive because it separates her from the Creator. So we could delineate this that the pleasure that there is in having attachment to the Creator is greater than the pleasure in receiving. And therefore, she closes the desire to receive, is not interested in receiving, but interested only in giving. The Rebbe takes another question. If there were only three stages without the Mahut, would it be a complete situation? And the Rebbe says, no, it would be the opposite of complete. If it didn't come out the great desire to receive, then we would not be able to actualize the purpose of creation. Because it's only the, the fourth aspect of the desire to receive, the great desire to receive, is the creation. So it would be very bad if the fourth aspect didn't come out. We'll contemplate on drawing number two. Until now we were looking at drawing number one. In a general way we've already spoken about this drawing. But it remains us to talk about another two matters. Let's go to the column before the last column, where it says parts of the world. Drawing number one. In each world, there are the five parts. Now, this is similar to what we have in this world. In this world, what do we have? Five things. We have God. We have humans. There's animals, plants, and minerals. Now, in the aspect of importance, what's the most important in this world? If we were to ask God, what's the most important to you in this world? The answer is clear. People. People are the crown of creation. Why was it created, the animals, plants, and the minerals? To serve humanity. So an aspect of importance, people are the most important. And God created people in order to give to us. So, in a way, then God is serving people. So, in this chart, the parts of the world, comes to give us the hierarchy of importance in the world. God is above people, is giving sustenance to people, and underneath people is the animal, plant, and mineral. So also in the spiritual worlds, we have exactly the same hierarchy. Sfirot, they are connected to God, which is above people. Then we have the souls, which is people. Then we have angels, that are the animal that exists in each world. Then we have the clothing, which is the plants in level in each world. And then there's the chambers or palaces, 
which is the mineral level of each world. Now, I said that all the souls come out of Malchut. That is the true creation. And here, in this column of the, of the chart, the souls are above and not below. The answer is that the parts of the world don't come to describe to us where the souls come from, but only come to describe for us the hierarchy, meaning the level of importance from above to below. Who is serving who? That is to say that each column has its own character here. Another question. Why does Bina completely reject the light of Chochmah? Why isn't there some progression? The answer is that there is a progression, but here we're learning the Pitiha la Chochmah Kabbalah, so everything is described very generally. That God willing, when we learn Tamun Esr Sfirot, we can go into the more details. Explanations on the names of the lights. The Keter is the light of Yechida. Why is Keter called the light of Yechida? Because it's the highest light. That it's becoming revealed that there's nothing but God. Realizing that there's only one thing in the world, which is God. The verse in prayer, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Listen, Israel, God is one. Becomes revealed that in all of creation, there's nothing more than God's desire to give goodness to creation. Therefore, this light is called Yechida, meaning oneness. Afterwards, the sphere of Chochmah is the light of Chaya, because it's the life force of creation. Chaya means life. The sphere of Bina has the light of Neshama, because the light of the sphere comes through giving. The integration is called the light of Ruach. And then the Mahut is the light of Nefesh. Because this is the great desire to receive in Mahut, so the light in the spiritual worlds of holiness, this desire to receive needs to be benefisha, mean, literally meaning to rest. And we'll learn about this later. Why does it need to rest? Because its characteristic is opposite to that of the Creator. Another question. Do Bina and Zerampin have a desire to receive all of the Chochmah, but just are not making use of it? The Rebbe answers, this is true with regards to Bina, but not with regards to Zerampin. This gives us insight into another question. Does Bina only desire to give? No, but Bina also desires to receive, but prefers attachment to God, so decides not to make use of her desire to receive. Question, if the vessel has desires of its own, the answer is, these vessels that we're learning about, they are born from God's desire to give goodness to creation. Do we have our own desire? Yes or no? Everything that we have comes from God. God gives us our power to think and the power to want and gives us freedom and gives us the choice. So, so we feel that we have the power to think and we feel that we have the power to choose, to want. But in actuality, everything comes from God. The desire to give goodness to creation, this is what is creating the entire system. This is that which is pushing all the different nuances in the vessel. The vessel is born with the light, then the vessel wants to stop to receive the light, then the vessel wants to be in an integration, the vessel wants only to receive. But behind all of this, 
is the upper light pushing the vessel through all these. But it's felt through the vessel as though the vessel is developing from themselves. For example, we're sitting now here in the lesson. We chose to learn these things. We chose to invest our time and our desire, thoughts and desire. But after everything we know, that all of this action of ours is coming by God's kindness. The same thing here. Rabbi is now reading in the text in number six. So these four aspects are the secret of the ten sefirot that are found in every created being. And they include the four spiritual worlds. And they are all the small details in reality. Pay attention to these words. These four aspects are found in every created being. Why is it ten? Because he already told us in number three that the Tiferet contains six. Why does Tiferet contain six? Didn't say. Now it says that these four aspects are found within every created being. Why? This is a, a law, unchanging law. Yud and He and Vav and He is found in every created being in all of creation. Why? The answer is because we're not speaking about God itself. Because of God itself, there's no understanding of God at all or at all. We can only talk about the created being and what the created being is able to obtain comprehension of. What is the created being? Malchut. Malchut is not able to come out without Tiferet before it. And Tiferet is not able to come out without Bina before it. And Bina is not able to come out without Chochma. And Chochma is not able to come out without Keter. So therefore it comes out that every created being has within it these four aspects. This means that it's found in generality and also in the details. I'll explain this. Look on drawing number one. The plant in the, in the levels of nature. What is the plant? It's Ziranpin, Tiferet, the Vav of the Divine Name. So if so, this plant is limited, but in a particular matter, in the plant itself, it has all four of the aspects. Why? Because of this law that we said, every, everything in this world is born from the desire of God to give goodness to creation, which is Keter. And everything in this world needs to arrive at a situation that of creation, which is Malchut. Therefore we find that in everything in this world, there are these four aspects. So if, for example, we'll take an apple, this apple has a desire to receive on the level of a plant. An apple is a plant. But in every aspect and aspect, in its details, it has all four of the aspects. Explain this. A baby has a desire to receive, and a five-year-old has a desire to receive, and a 50-year-old has a desire to receive. They all have desire to receive. Now, if I'm going to compare the desire to receive of the baby to the desire to receive of the boy, to the desire to receive of the, of the older person. So of course the desire to receive of the child is smaller. And the desire to receive of the older person is more developed. 
This is if I begin to measure them one in relation to the other. But if I'm not looking in relative to one another, but each one only looking to it on its own, so if we relate to each one just by itself, there needs to be within it Keter Chochmah Bina, Tiferet and Malchut. Who will be the Malchut? The desire to receive of the baby. Who will be the Malchut by the boy? The desire to receive of the boy. The same thing with the older person. The desire to receive in each being is the Malchut of that being. So it's clear that if I make a relationship between them, one to the other, there's difference. But if I'm not relating one to the other, but looking at each one as its own, so there's no detail or general aspect that does not have the progression of the four aspects of direct light. Everything begins with God's desire to give goodness to creation, which is called the tip of the Yud. And everything finishes with the desire to receive that is found in that desire to give goodness. And that's what's talking here in number six, that these four levels are the secret of the ten spherot that are within, differentiated within every created being. Also and generally, they are the four spiritual worlds, and also in every small detail in reality. In everything, there needs to be this progression. This progression is something that is necessary in reality. These ideas are based on some laws. The first law we learned in number four, that the shining of the light and its disappearing is what makes the vessel fitting for its purpose. There needs to be a drawing, a shining of the light, and there needs to be a going away of the light. Why does there need to be a going, a shining of the light? Because if there won't be a shining of the light, the vessel won't know what to yearn for. Why does there need to be a disappearing of the light? Because we have a law that the vessel does not yearn for something that it already has. So these are two solid laws, unchanging laws. The shining of the light needs to be, otherwise the vessel won't know what to yearn for. And therefore we need the sphere of Chochmah. Chochmah is born the vessel with the light. If the vessel is not born with the light, it won't know what to yearn for. Afterwards, the light needs to leave. In Bina, why does the light need to leave? Because the vessel does not yearn for something it already has. So the ore goes away. Afterwards, we have Ziranpin, which is the integration, something integrating Chochmah and Bina. And afterwards comes out the Malchut, which is the desire to receive in its maximum measure. Therefore, every one of these stages is necessary. Otherwise, it would not be created the desire to receive in its maximum manner. I hope that you understand this properly. It's very important that this will be completely clear. That why it's necessary for these four aspects. It needs to be clear. Why isn't Malchut created directly from Bina? Why doesn't the desire to receive come directly from the Bina? Because we need progression. First of all, the progression is for our own benefit. There can't be that Bina that's interested in giving will suddenly be interested only in receiving. There needs to be a middle stage that's half desire to give and half desire to receive. And afterwards, we can come out the great desire to receive. So we need to understand that 
everything that we take, doesn't matter what, whether it's a plant in the courtyard, or it's a cat, or it's a person, everyone has a desire to receive, and the desire to receive can come out only by this progression. Therefore, we have the four letters of the divine name Yud and He and Vav and He in every aspect. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi says Shabbat Shalom to everybody.